Hey everyone. So here are three very common mistakes players make when throwing easy up shots. And I'm specifically talking about easy up shots. This is mistakes players make on those approaches that you're supposed to make nearly every time, but, but don't. So the first, I talk all the time about lines, right? Lines, lines, lines. Everything on the backhand is about lines. You square up 90 degrees, there's a line in front of you pointing the direction you're throwing. And it's important, I always clarify, it's not where the tee pad points if you're driving. It doesn't point to the target. It doesn't even point to where the disc lands. The line is the direction the disc is leaving your hand. Now, this is not as often messed up in drives. Players who are throwing a hyzer shot around the fairway, they come with the tee pad and angle typically. So lines, lines are usually done correctly on tee pads more often than not. But then on approach shots, I see players disregard this all the time. They step up to an easy approach shot. The basket is straight out this way, just past that tree. So they square up straight at the basket and then they try to throw the hyzer shot around the tree or the Anheuser shot around the tree. They have squared up towards the target, not the direction the disc is going. If I'm throwing a disc around that tree and I'm trying to throw about 10 degrees up with about 10 degrees of hyzer. All I have to do is square up my feet and my body on a line where the disc is going, which is to the right of the tree. And then all I have to do is lean down 10 degrees. And when I pull back, my arm would be tilted 10 degrees. If I square up right of that tree, 10 degrees of hyzer and the disc pointing 10 degrees up and I throw the disc, it can't go anywhere other than around the tree to the target. Now that does apply, it's the exact same rule applies to a tricky wooded uh, window you're trying to hit as well. But this is where people mess up. On these shots, you should never mess those up. It also happens, and this is the most common time this happens, is when you're throwing a shot and it, there's no obstacle, it's wide open. Well, even a wide open shot, if you're throwing a hyzer approach shot, not if you're throwing a straight shot, right? If you're throwing a straight shot, you square up at the target. But if you're throwing a hyzer approach shot, like many people will on a, say, 150 foot wide open approach shot, you still square up 90 degrees to an imaginary spot, say 30, 40 feet to the right of the target. You have to account for the disc fading in. So make sure your lines, make sure you're accountable to your lines on, just as you are on the drives, but be diligent about them on the pro shots. Don't get lazy because it's an easy shot. The second thing you want to do is always account, or at least try to account for what's going to happen to the disc once it hits the ground. This is so, so, so common, especially among amateur players, that they throw approach shots that hit by the base of the target. And then the disc skips 25 feet long, and usually they complain about it being bad luck. I can't believe it skipped. Well, no, I, based on the terrain, what you're looking at, obviously not out in the middle of the desert where I am now, but if you're out on a grass field or hard packed dirt, account for what the disc is going to do. Make a, an educated guess. If the disc is going to skip 20 feet forward and 10 feet left on average on that approach shot, aim your shot 20 feet short, 10 feet to the right, right? Account for that. You have to play the reaction once it hits the ground. And again, it's unpredictable, but you can make an educated guess. Probability say that the majority of the time, you're going to be pretty close to getting it right. And the third mistake players do, and this is the one I've talked about before, but you, you have to account for the wind, right? A 10 foot putt, a 12 foot putt is a drop in for an amateur player. A 15 to 18 foot putt is a drop in for a pro. I mean, you're, you're probably going to make the 20 footers, but I mean, 15 feet, you're never supposed to miss those as a pro player. You're never supposed to miss 10 footers as an amateur player. In a 15 mile an hour headwind, a moderate headwind, that is a missable putt. 10% of the time, probably you're going to hit, it's going to blow back or it's just going to squib off to the side. Almost never going to happen when you're putting with a tailwind. So simply take that into account. Which way the wind is blowing? If the wind's blowing right to left, then land the disc seven, eight feet to the right or account for the ground to kick the disc seven or eight feet to the right. But don't ignore that. 
Don't try to skip the disc up towards the target and then hope it's not to the left side of the basket when the wind's blowing right to left, right? Just simply take that into account. So all these things, none of these things are mechanical. Like if, if you're at a point where you're watching disc golf instructional videos, you have the mechanics and the physical ability to throw a 130 foot up and down approach shot every time. All of these are actually mental. I do private lessons. I do them for players all over the country. I do them by video. So if you're interested in talking about that, message me or email me at disc golf lesson. And that's lesson singular, disc golf lesson at gmail.com. I'd love to talk to you about helping you out with your game.